Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya al mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'een. Firstly, I'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to benefit from this great program. I'd like to thank Ikna and the organizers and all the volunteers that are working behind the scenes to bring this program to us. And I'd like to thank all of the participants um, for watching and inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to benefit from what we are experiencing today. The first presentation inshallah will be delivered by the Islamic Circle of North America President, uh, Brother Javed Siddiqui. Uh, and inshallah the title of his presentation is Blessings of Grassroots Work. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, <clears throat> I begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's enabled us to be able to make this presentation, this symposium, and to be able to really bring this programming to our communities across the, across the United States and across the world. Brothers and sisters, uh, first of all, I wanna begin by thanking the organizers. You probably have no idea how much effort that went into this programming. This team that has been very focused over the past almost six months, uh, trying to get the ICNA convention, the actual physical convention in place. And just about three weeks ago, we had to decide to cancel that. And Alhamdulillah, with Allah's help and, and mercy that we were able to uh, put this programming. And I inshallah hope and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you would find this uh, programming useful, something that would really give you comfort and hope in this time of need. Brothers and sisters, if I were to say to you that the vision of ICNA is very simple, I wanna simplify it to you. The vision that we have for this organization and for the people around us is very, very simple. It is attaining the pleasure of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to attain this pleasure, we commit ourselves and strive to please him by following his commands without exceptions in all that we do. From every aspect of our lives, in, in terms of our, our personal lives, our family lives, our community lives, and for the life of our entire society. That is the very simple answer for this. And today I want to take some time to really share with you this grassroots work, the blessing that we see, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when people come together and work for a higher cause to please him. Now the question becomes is, okay, if we are here if the purpose of our lives is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do we do that? And I want to spend with some time with you today discussing some of those aspects. And I think this really has to be divided into four different sides. One of the key concepts that you will hear me talk about consistently during this few minutes is about being organized, about being focused, and about being consistent. We feel for the work of ICNA to progress and for this type of work to benefit mankind around us, we must be organized. We must work as an organization, as a jama'ah. Yadullahi ala al-jama'ah. We hear that hadith of Prophet often, that Allah's hand is on the jama'ah. A single sheep can be an easy target for wolves. We've heard that so many times. So let's begin. I want to share with you the four levels that we consider are extremely important. Number one is at the personal level. Number two is at the level of your family. We have to understand what pleases Allah when it comes to yourself at a personal level. What pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the level of family? What pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the level of community? and what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to the level of society around us. What are some of the obligations that we have? So when someone asks me, and this is a question that we always discuss uh, among ourselves many a times, 
when someone asks me, what does ICNA do? What is the key goal and purpose of the organization? What are you engaged in? And the answer is very simple. The answer is we are engaged in developing people. We want people to develop into role models. Role models as fathers, as sons, as sisters, as mothers. Role models that will be really followed by everyone around them. We want people when they are in the right mindset, when they understand the purpose of their life, they understand what they are here for. They can go anywhere. They can live in any part of the world and they will themselves will start those efforts to influence themselves personally, to influence their families, to bring about a change to the community and to bring about a change to society. That's what we are really here. That's what we're trying to change and do, brothers and sisters. So let's begin by the first level, which is the personal level. <clears throat> and when it comes to the personal level, the Prophet Sallallahu gave us some guidance, some very, very beautiful guidance when he was asked. He said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al rashidin min ba'di. That you must follow my sunnah and the sunnah of my beloved, my guided caliphs after me. So the question becomes is, and on the personal level, what can I become as a person, as an individual? What should I do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Obviously that has to do with my ibadat, my spirituality, my connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my connection to the book of Allah, my, the deeper my understanding, the closer I am, and the stronger this relationship will be. And the stronger the impact will be in my personality and the, and, and the lives of people around me. So that's at the very first level. So when we talk about the spirituality and we talk about the personal contact, we at ICNA feel that developing ourselves, understanding our connections to Allah, understanding what we are required to do to become closer to the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment. How do I do that as an individual? Until and unless I know Allah, until and unless I know the Prophet ﷺ, until and unless I study the lives of our Sahaba, I'm not going to be informed about their contributions. Brothers and sisters, this fuel this energy, this motivation that is required for us to be able to perform at this level. Just to give you an example, this putting up this symposium required hours and hours and hours of really work in terms of contacting the speakers, arranging the, te the technical side of it, deciding up the, uh, the, the content and the program, all that. All the activists that we see around and all these people, where is that fuel? that really fuels their lives? What is, what is that motivation that drives them every single day? And you have to think about that deeply and you say, there's nothing that will drive them unless they really have that clear understanding of the purpose of their lives. They have a clear understanding of what the Prophet ﷺ has done for them. They have the clear understanding of the sacrifices that people before us, the Sahaba and the Salaf al Salih, who has really sacrificed for us to be able to reach to this point. Until unless I understand those life stories, I'm not going to be motivated. I may feel like if I'm spending two hours a day on uh, a nonprofit work or on some religious activity or in my masjid, I've done enough. The fuel that really fires us is really in that personal development. One of the ways in which we have decided and this is where the grassroots and the work of Jama'ah becomes very, very apparent. This concept of neighborness. These neighborness, brothers and sisters, the idea is if you live in a neighborhood, if you attend a masjid, you form this group of four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe maximum of 10 people who gather together on a weekly basis, who will spend time studying Quran, understanding, developing that that motivation that I'm talking about, right? Developing that 
a sense of purpose of life. Study a book of Sira. When this collective effort happens, brothers and sisters, our motivation changes because you and I, we all understand, have the last time we've tried to do exercise by an, on our own for some, for some time. After a while, you lose motivation. If you start a diet, after a while, you lose motivation. If you start going on a walk and if you're by, by yourself after a while, you lose motivation. So, but at the same time, we also understand the power of Jama'ah. We understand the power of groups and camaraderie. When you have people who are helping you, who are reminding you, Brother Abdullah, there is, uh, can I pick you up for Salat al-Fajr in the morning? Or you are picking somebody up or you are calling someone. Remember this, we have, uh, we have a study circle tomorrow. That really enhances our ability to develop ourselves. So I really want you to think about this concept of developing ourselves and what are some of the examples uh, that we can relate to. The brotherhood and sisterhood that you can develop as a result of coming together to learn the Book of Allah, to do these study circles, to go out on, on trips maybe, and, and learn together dream together, be able to execute things together. That togetherness, brothers and sisters, is what we think ikna provides. That allows you to really develop at the level of who you are as a person, at the level of your knowledge, and at the level of uh, your understanding and relationship with, with you, one another around you. Now, let's kind of uh, move on to the next perspective. And this perspective is at the family, at the level of the family. We all should understand what motivates us in terms of the family. What motivates us and what are, what are some of the inspirations that we have from Quran and Sunnah when it comes to the family? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. And all who you believe, protect yourself and your families from the fire of hell. This is a very, very clear uh instructions to, to to the believers icna has taken that instruction and really divided that into multiple segments and he said we have families how can we all together please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a family and for that we felt it was very important to create these segments these focused organized and consistent segment for our family members for our wives or sisters for youth, for children, Muslim children of North America is an organized effort. Ikna Sisters is an organized effort. YM Brothers and YM Sisters is an organized effort. And that allows for everyone to learn together and to be able to understand that this power of jama'ah, this power of group, this power of movement and organization really allows you at the level of the family, become connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of time, inshallah, I'll move on and I'll talk about the third aspect. And it's on the third aspect, at the level of community. I want to remind you <clears throat> the concept of service in Islam and the concept and the examples of what Prophet has done in his lifetime when it comes to service and how he served people around him, how he served his community and how when you bring the power of organized work, consistent work and focused work, you can make a difference. The inspiration we have is that we feed you for the sake of Allah and we don't expect any recompense from you or any, any thankfulness from you. And this principle and based upon this principle, ICNA, has launched multiple projects, one for domestic relief by the name of Ikna Relief and one by the name of Helping Hand for international relief. Because brothers and sisters, as you can see in these times today and the presentations you may have seen earlier and you'll see later on, Ikna Relief in itself is speaking about, is they're speaking on behalf of the Muslim community. When people look at those green shirts which says Muslims for Humanity, they ask, are we really surprised that Muslims actually do this kind of work? 
So we're very blessed to have these organizations, which at the domestic level, at the international level, are really speaking and showing the power of organization, the power of grassroots and how it can translate into not only taking care of ourselves, our families, but now at the level of our communities. And on, on, the, on the last aspect, on the last aspect, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَلَى الْمُنْكَرِ And there should be a group from among you who would invite to what was good and stops from what is, what is evil. And when you think about that, we understand this to be one of the prophetic missions. We understand this to be the prophetic mission of all prophets. All prophets of Allah from the time of Adam alayhi salam till Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam were based upon this principle. They came to guide humanity. And at the community, at, this, at the level of society, we feel, we feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us. And in order to please him, we must do this. And for that purpose, brothers and sisters, ICNA has launched a massive campaign of national da'wah based upon their, the two arms of ICNA, which is why Islam and Gain Peace, I'm sure you've heard the names. But we are trying to reach to every single household in America with the message of Islam. We feel that that is going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our inspiration in every aspect, brothers and sisters, as I said in the very beginning, the vision that we have is to attain the pleasure of Allah. And the question for us was, how do you attain the pleasure of Allah at the personal level, at the level of your families, at the level of a community, and at the level of society? And this is what drives us every single day, brothers and sisters. So in conclusion, I want to say this. We need to develop people who understand the purpose of life and why we have been put on earth. These people must work together at all levels, at the level of their own self, at the personal level, at their family level, at the community level, and at the level of society to bring about this change which benefits everyone. It benefits everyone at the end of the day, brothers and sisters. You have to understand that part. And the third point here in conclusion, this work cannot be done alone. And therefore, we have formed this brotherhood and this sisterhood to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, remember, until and unless we do this in an organized way, and this is why we've spawned multiple nonprofits that are organized, they are focused, and they are consistently trying to focus on the same vision and mission to please and attain the uh, the, 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 the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, I want to, uh, in, in, in final words, I'd like to say, <clears throat> in these very difficult times, we're seeing so many side benefits of this, of this brotherhood and the sisterhood. We see how the organization, its chapters, its members are really extending a helping hand to each, each one of them. Because everyone in so many communities, we are seeing people who, are, who have lost their jobs. Either they are sick or their loved one is sick and they need, and they need help emotionally, physically, financially. And alhamdulillah, this, we have seen that this grassroots effort has turned into really an effort where people are able to connect. As a matter of fact, if I look back at the time of this last past month here, I think most of the members of ICNA were probably spending more time with each and other than even sometimes more than their families. They're probably more connected and engaged in trying to see what can they do? What can they do to bring about a change? What can they do to bring hope to the community? How can they really add more programming? And for the past several weeks, we have been constantly adding more programming, more online activities, so that our community can really, inshallah, come together, feel, feel the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, see the hope and understand the lessons sometimes of why we have been put in this situation. 
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you all safe and sound. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you and your loved one and your family safe inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Brother Javed, uh, for explaining the vision uh, of Ikna. And inshallah, during the Q&A session, inshallah, we'll have more opportunity to take some questions and expand a little bit more on this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose us all to do the work of the deen, inshallah. Uh, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you on the path to choose you to do the work of the deen and for the community in America and beyond really to benefit from uh, what we've learned today, inshallah. So with that, um, we will move, inshallah, to conclude this session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfirullah wa atubu alayk.